Meryl Streep is an icon. She holds the record for the most Academy Award nominations and she's still acting at 72. Add to that her four decade long marriage and four loving kids and upon first glance, it may seem like she's lived the perfect life. Of course, just because Meryl has enjoyed a lot of success in her career doesn't mean that things have always gone her way in her personal life. Instead, when Streep's career was still taking off, she suffered a terrible loss, which could have easily derailed her career as well as her personal life. In 1978, a young Meryl Streep was on the verge of becoming the most outstanding actor of her generation. Tragically, she was also about to lose the love of her life. Michael Shulman, who wrote one of her biographies, said that her life was so wildly eventful and dramatic at the time. It was instrumental in shaping who she was as a person and as an actor. Meryl Streep found her first true love early in life. At 27, she was a young woman in the New York theater world who met 41-year-old actor John Cazal when they both landed roles in the New York Shakespeare Festival production. Their connection was instant. At the time, Cazal was regarded as a rare talent in demand among the great directors of the era. He was Fredo in The Godfather in The Godfather Part II. He was only in five movies, though all of them would be nominated for Best Picture, and three would win. One of the things I loved about the casting of John Cazal, said director Sidney Lumet, was that he had a tremendous sadness about him. I don't know where it came from, but my god it's there. Every shot of him. Even in the funniest characters that he played, there was also always something tragic in it. Even in the most tragic characters, there was always something very funny. And then there were his unusual looks, so perfect for the misfits of the 1970s cinema. Streep fell for him instantly. He was equally knocked out. In looks and manner, he was utterly foreign to the young Meryl. He wasn't like anybody she'd ever met, and John was equally smitten. It was the specificity of him, his sort of humanity and his curiosity about people, his compassion that drove her in more than anything. Of the two, Cazal was the famous one, but they were still starving artists. He would take Streep to dinner in Little Italy, where restaurant owners, odd to have Fredo in the room, insisted they eat for free. The romance moved pretty fast, and they were soon living happily together in Cazal's Tribeca loft. The lovebirds were the envy of the New York theater world. Suddenly, he fell ill. He'd been feeling bad enough to miss performances. Within days, they were sitting in the doctor's office. The diagnosis? Terminal lung cancer. It had spread throughout his body. I don't want the cancer. John fell silent. For a moment, so did Meryl. But she was never one to give up, and certainly not one to succumb to despair. She looked up and said, so where should we go to dinner? Cazal dropped out of his play immediately. Streep was starring in the musical, and her castmates saw no sign of her anxiety or grief. She had a kind of tough love about it, actor Christopher Lloyd said. She didn't let him malinger. A devastated Streep never left his side, becoming a prime example of what love looks like. The couple tried to keep the severity of his condition between them. Even Cazal's brother, Stephen, didn't realize how bad it was until one day after the three of them had lunch. John stopped on the sidewalk and spat up blood. Al Pacino took him to radiation treatments, sitting in the waiting room, hoping it wasn't as bad as it seemed. Cazal himself insisted he'd get better, and when he fought to go back to work, Streep took a part she loathed so that she could be with him. She was just the girl in the movie, essentially a man's view of a woman, Streep said. She was extremely passive, she's very quiet, she's someone who's constantly vulnerable. In short, she was everything Streep was not. But the film was The Deer Hunter, and the filmmakers fought to cast Cazal, even as the production company insisted he'd be fired. The insurance costs would be outrageous, and no one wanted to back a film with a terminally ill star. The director Michael Cimino said later that he was told that unless he got rid of John, they would shut down the picture. It was awful. I spent hours on the phone, yelling and screaming and fighting. The story Streep would later tell, De Niro covered Cazal's insurance costs, which the actor had never confirmed or denied, but later said, I wanted him to be in it. All Streep wanted to do was quit working and be with their love, but they were still struggling with medical bills. So the actor had to choose between spending more time with her dying boyfriend and paying the bills so he would actually live longer. How devastating. Reluctantly, she took a lead role in the miniseries Holocaust, solely for the money. It was filmed in Austria and Cazal was too weak to go. Streep never complained, but quietly she agonized. The material was unrelentingly grim, Merrill later said. They shot on location at an actual concentration camp, which she found profoundly disturbing, especially in such a hard time. 
She spent two and a half months in Austria, longer than she'd been told, separated from her beloved, each day another lost forever. Meryl was going crazy, John was sick, and she wanted to be with him. When she finally got back to New York, Kazal was worse than she'd ever seen him, and when it became clear he didn't have much time left, she took five months off from work so that they could spend as much time together as possible, even moving into the hospital during his final days. For five months, the couple disappeared. His cancer had spread to the bones and he was increasingly weak. She went with him to every doctor's appointment, every radiation treatment, and never betrayed a lack of hope. She was always a strong-willed, persistent, hopeful person, and I think she just applied all her spirit and strength to taking care of him, Shulman says. Speaking about her devotion, some viewed it as too extreme, and for others, she embodies the most prominent pillar of true love, selflessness. Streep later said that the time they had together, retreating into their cocoon, gave her a weird sort of protection. She was so close that she didn't notice the deterioration. She confided in very few people and wrote to her old drama teacher at Yale about her actual emotional state. My beau is terribly ill, Streep wrote. I'm worried all the time and pretending to be cheery all the time, which is more exhausting mentally, physically, and emotionally than any work I've ever done. In March 1978, John entered a caring facility and Meryl never left his side. Then on March 12th at 3 a.m., Kazal's doctor told Streep, he's gone. Meryl wasn't ready to hear it, much less believe it. What happened next, by some accounts, was the culmination of all the tenacious hope Meryl had kept alive for the past 10 months. She pounded on his chest, sobbing, and for a brief, alarming moment, John opened his eyes. It's all right, Meryl, he said weakly. It's all right. Then he closed his eyes and died. Streep's first call was to Kazal's brother, Stephen. She sobbed throughout. I tried, she told him. There was some foreboding thing. I think he saw something in the future. I don't know what it was, but he might have seen uh, what happened to him. The tragic loss weighed heavily on her, but that year, Streep had success upon success. She won an Emmy for Holocaust, an Oscar nomination for The Deer Hunter, starred in a career-making role in Kramer vs. Kramer, which won her the Academy Award, and was cast in Shakespeare in the park's The Taming of the Shrew. She had become a star, but John's death and her own suffering had transformed her as a person and an actor. For all her later accomplishments, 19 Academy Award nominations and three wins, her friends and fellow actors most admire Streep for her devotion to Kazal, for the strength of character such a young woman showed. When I saw that girl there with him like that, I thought, there's nothing like that. I mean, that's it for me. As great as she is in her work, that's what I think of when I think of her, Al Pacino said. A few months after her partner's death, Streep was kicked out of the apartment they had shared. Faced with the difficult task of packing up his belongings, she called on her brother for help. He, in turn, brought along a friend, sculptor Don Gummer, to lend a hand. As fate would have it, Streep ended up subletting Gummer's apartment since he was supposed to be in Pakistan for an extended holiday. The two began exchanging letters, then a motorcycle accident cut his plans short, bringing him home sooner than planned. While holding her two-year relationship with Kazal close to her heart, Streep didn't allow its tragic end to stop her from moving forward, both in life and in love. Just six months later, in September 1978, the actor and the sculptor said, I do. The wedding raised plenty of eyebrows, even straining Meryl's relationship with her mother, but no one could stop them from following their hearts. Four decades of marital bliss and four kids later, Meryl and Don are a rarity in Hollywood. They're as happy as ever and have managed to keep an incredibly low profile, even moving to a secluded estate in Connecticut back in 1985. The few times that the Oscar winner has spoken about her private life, however, she's made it clear that one of the biggest keys to their long-lasting romance has been the fact that they're equals. Their relationship has never been a competition, and Don has never tried to outshine his wife's first love or career. He couldn't be more supportive. In addition to being her date to countless premieres and award ceremonies, Gummer helped his wife's career blossom by always being there for her. As Streep once said, I couldn't even dream of being a mother and making movies without Don. That's because he was always happy to look after their kids so that she could be on set. In a rare moment in 2012, Streep revealed just how important Gummer has been in all aspects of her life, as she gushed about her husband while accepting the Best Actress Oscar for her role in The Iron Lady. First, I'm going to thank Don, because when you thank your husband at the end of the speech, they play him out with the music, and I want him to know that everything I value most in our lives, you've given me. As Marilyn has shown the world, finding love again is not a matter of forgetting what came before. 
Instead, it's about celebrating that memory without allowing it to delay your growth, whether professional or personal. That's all we have for you today. As always, thanks for choosing Rumor Juice. Spread the word and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for more stories on celebrity couples that will make you feel all the feelings.